right, guys, we are back. This is the Dream is Free podcast, and we are on episode 19. Hell yeah. Yes. Episode 19. Uh, I'm your host, Jake Healy. We have our other host and super producer, Mike Theophil. What up, folks? Our guest today is Juliana Featherman. She is the creator of an app called Making Authentic Friendships, which is a friend-finding app for people with special needs. Um, so basically, it's an app to go on where you could find people of, the, of similar needs in, in the area to link up and make friendships. It's a great idea. It's original. Um, thank you so much for coming on today. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you for driving from Long Island to Connecticut <laughs> for this. We really appreciate it. Yeah. My old stomping grounds. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> it must be nice to be back to on, the, on the east side of Bridgeport, it Connecticut. It is. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, so we're here to talk about your app that's launching hopefully next week, right? Tentatively. Right. Yes. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, and tell us, tell us how you came up with the application. So in the spirit of talking about Bridgeport, I obviously attended Sacred Heart University. That's why I'm here. And I was the president of the autism club there. And I absolutely loved it. I just loved raising awareness and money for a cause that I cared so much about because my brother has autism. And I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life at the time, but I just love being the president of the autism club so much that I'm like, if I could think of a business I can make to make my brother's life better, then I can make a business out of it and then ultimately be the president of the autism club in the real world. What was the uh, autism club at Sacred Heart for? Like, what is um, the purpose of it? We just raised awareness on campus, raised money, uh, donated it to the local schools in Bridgeport. We would mentor in the classrooms in Bridgeport as well, the special needs classrooms. And it was just the greatest experience. We would organize walks and, you know, charity kickball tournaments and all types of different things. And I was also captain of the cheer team. So I was really able to use all my different circles and bring people together and really raise that awareness for the cause. So that was really great. And so I'm like, oh, I can make a business maybe and see, you know, <laughs> what that could be like. And so I started thinking of things that maybe were missing in my brother's life. And I thought about it for a really long time. And one of the first things that came to me that I thought was really good was that he's really lonely. And he doesn't really have a lot of friends because of... So you're uh, younger or older brother? Younger. Okay. He's two years younger. Uh, so he doesn't really have a lot of friends because he doesn't really know how to have a conversation or, you know, his social skills are not working. That, you know, he doesn't have very good yeah. social skills, which is very common. We have, we have a little cousin who, who's autistic oh, yeah. as yeah. well, yeah. And um, he's thankfully, like, pretty, you know, he's verbal, and um, he's, he's really, really into his iPad. Mm -hmm. Very, very smart. Really yeah. smart. Right. And, uh, yeah, you kind of have to take the iPad away from him to get him to talk to you, though. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I understand. Yeah, that's amazing. My brother's also high-functioning, but unfortunately, he's not one of those individuals that has like a really high IQ it's actually the opposite um for him so you know of course he has his talents and stuff but right. he's not really one of the ones that are like super smart so yeah so he just really lacked in the social skills area and especially through middle school high school um I would always go out on the weekends have plans with my friends all the time and he didn't have that and I would just be like leaving him behind and I always felt really bad and I saw as he went into high school and got older that that really started affecting him, you know. He would get very lonely, very depressed, and it really started adding on to other issues he already has daily. So I'm like, oh, there's probably people near us that actually are going through the same thing. We just don't know them. Right. So I said if I could create an app to kind of connect those people, then maybe he could find those people that are going through the same thing and they could go through it together and they could be friends. And that's kind of how it originated. And of course, like anything else, it just started as an idea. And then I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I was so naive. I truly thought I could make an app with like my savings. And of course, that's not the case. Yeah. Five years <laughs> later, I still don't have an app, almost, but um, and a lot of money and resources and everything later. Um, yeah. Where, where'd you take the idea first to like kind of get started? Uh, well, my dad is my business partner. Uh, not really, but he just kind of gives me advice on everything and I run everything past him. So I brought it to my parents first um, and people we know just kind of seeing what they thought of it. And I got really positive feedback, obviously. And then I needed to get proof of concept. So how I did that is I started an Instagram and that's something I did for the Autism Club at Sacred Heart as well. So I figured, oh, I could start an Instagram, get the idea in front of people, specifically like our target audience, so other special needs families, parents, 
and kind of get proof of concept that way and see what they think of it. Because, you know, your parents are going to think the idea is good, but then once you get it in front of strangers, that's when you really know whether it's something that's going to work or not. Right. So I got it in front of these people, and we just kept getting positive feedback, and it just kept coming positive, positive, positive. So we started kind of rolling from there, getting a, more followers and more positive feedback, and I'm like, oh, I guess I'm on to something here because everyone seems to see a need for this. So, yeah, that's really how I did it, and I just kept building that. That's something I still do to date, and we have 13,000 followers on Instagram now, and it's just become such a great community for me to actually talk to my people and just share advice, stories. This so is much. this is a service that you can go on the web right now and like website, yes. go on there and like you can actually find other people in your area. Mm -hmm. um, how did you start kind of bringing people together? Like what was the first step into launching it, getting people on the platform and like what are like what's the success story behind it? Like, do you know anybody that's used it that you had no connection to that used the app, met somebody, became good friends, and like went through it all? Yes. So I have all of that. I honestly don't even know how I started because obviously the main obstacle is putting something like this out there and then actually getting users. Because you could put it out there, but without users, it's not worth anything. So I kind of just pushed it out, started just marketing it through the social media, which was always huge for me. Because right. I built such a tight-knit community of all people in the industry. So that was very crucial. Because then when I launched, all these people were already invested in me and the idea. So they were ready to hop right onto it. So I launched the web app last August. And by that time, I had thousands and thousands of followers. And they were all really eager to get on it. So right off the bat, in like the first week, we had hundreds of users, which is very nice. But of course, that's not enough. Um, and then over the course of the last year, we kind of just, and by we, I mean me, <laughs> <laughs> kind of just pushed out uh, as much marketing as we can. We were talking about it before, but I'm my own PR person and I'm very good at that. And I've gotten myself in Forbes on Lifetime, CNN, Today Show, all these crazy national coverage things, which is insane. And I'm so blessed for that. Uh, and all those things really every time helped us grow, 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 grow. Uh, and now, a year later, we're at a point where we have over 3,000 users in all 50 states and 40 countries on six continents, which is insane. We have users in places I've never even heard of before, and it's just surreal. Um, but as for success stories, yes, I have a bunch. I have had personal connections now with a lot of my users just throughout all of this, you know, them reaching out to me, and we've just become friendly. So I've become friendly with a handful of them. And two of them in particular, who I often pick on to get interviewed for my national pieces and stuff, uh, Trey and Connor, they're both from New Jersey. They met on the app, and they're best friends now, and I'm friendly with both of them as well, and they're just so cute, and they're constantly texting me, thanking me <laughs> for, you know, letting them become friends, and also for my friendship, uh, so that's amazing. And early on, like, I don't know, probably six months ago, I got a review from someone who said that it changed their life and they're just so happy that someone cares enough to do this and they're just so grateful for me and I don't know the wording exactly but it made me so happy that I actually got it made on a tapestry and now the tapestry of that review hangs up on my wall awesome just as a reminder you know is your uh, brother using that he is yes he is he was a little hesitant in the beginning because you know it's been all attention on him it's been crazy there's always cameras in his face and stuff um, and his sister made it, so he gets, like, weird about it. But right. <laughs> <laughs> throughout quarantine, he's really grown on the idea and, you know, has been chatting with people and stuff on there. But it was definitely a work in progress to get him on it. <laughs> Can you explain uh, the app user process? So, like, go on, create an account, and then mm -hmm. what, like, what kind of information are you putting in there? Like, how is it linking you up with other people? Is it just geographical? Uh, yeah, so it actually matches people based on age, diagnosis, interests, and geographic location. But the sign-up process, so the whole thing from the start was always supposed to be designed like a game. I wanted it to be very user-friendly, obviously, for all ability levels. So I really wanted to kind of design it like a children's app would be designed, and that's what we ultimately ended up doing. So big, big buttons, lots of colors, everything's kind of like in your face, so you know exactly what you need to do. Uh, so the first thing we ask for is an email address, obviously, to contact the person. Mm -hmm. And many times it's a parent. You have to be 13 or older to make your own profile. 
because of child protective laws. But if you're younger than 13, then a parent or caregiver can make it. And mm, <laughs> so then the first thing we ask is if it's for the individual themselves or if it's for a parent or caregiver. And then we're going to ask your diagnosis. So we list, I believe, like 14. Uh, I talk a lot about autism, obviously, because that's what my brother has. But we do serve any intellectual or physical special need. So we serve Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, spinal bifida, hearing impairment, sight impairment, epilepsy, just to name a few. And if your diagnosis isn't listed there, then there is an other. And that's the only place in the whole sign up process where you actually like type it in can type something in. And we ask you your difficulty, level of difficulty with making friends so we can kind of get a feel for that. Then we are going to ask your birthday, obviously, for the age thing. Right. And your gender, which you don't have to specify. And then your interests. So the first one is general. So sports, movies, things like that. And the second one is things you might like to do with a friend. So things in the community, bowling, mini golf, stuff like that. But obviously with Corona, that's kind of a mute point. But So it's been more like during Corona used for chatting, yes. just staying connected. I mean, we really were focusing more on chatting anyway for the first year, just like building the database. Uh, so the chatting was a really big thing. And obviously now because Corona, but we with the launch of the actual app, we are pushing more video chat, audio chat, you know, different features that will be helpful for that, too. Awesome. Oh, and then the final step is you create an avatar that looks like yourself. So it's like a bit moji. You pick hair color, skin color, eye color, clothes, and it just adds to the game aspect. And it's supposed to be fun and interactive. And then you sign the terms and conditions and you see the map. That's it. Awesome. And then um, as far as we were talking about safety goes, mm -hmm. like what kind of safety precautions are in there for obviously people meeting up with random people? Right. Um, what kind of uh, steps have you taken for that? So safety has been a number one concern of mine and my family's, of course, but obviously in putting it out into the community, that's always parents' first, you know, thought, like, right. well, how are you keeping it safe? And it is a naive population, one that could be easily taken advantage of, so I completely understand that. Uh, so the first thing we do is obviously terms and conditions. You have to sign them to make a profile. And then within the actual platform, so you obviously can click around on the map, see who's around you, things like that, decide who you want to chat with. And once you chat with them, uh, we have filters in the chat. So there's no bad or inappropriate language allowed at all. You can't even type it in the app. But if something does get through, it gets flagged in our system, and my developers and I are notified. Or every user has the ability to report a user, which we encourage them to do so. And if they feel threatened, uncomfortable, they report it. And then my developers and I, same thing, can pull up the conversation from the back end, see what's going on, and decide whether that's going to warrant a warning or a ban. And, yeah, I mean, that's actually been working really well for us. Over the past year, with over 3,000 users, we've only had, like, 10 incidents of, sure. like, reporting. And out of those, only, like, one or two were actually. Because, you know, sometimes the population doesn't understand, so they report, like, oh, this person sent me two messages in a row or something. Uh, and we also have, like, pop-ups throughout that tell you not to give out your personal information, not to give out your address. If you're going to meet up, meet in public, never go alone, you know, all these things that we're trying to reiterate the safety piece that, you know, is common sense to us, but some people have a hard time understanding that. Got it. And then for, uh, like, let's say there's somebody who's maybe not um – Able to use their cell phone. This is something that a parent could just jump on, set up an account for them. Yeah. Wait, use that. So like I said, a parent or caregiver can sign up for someone, whether they're either under the age of 13 or they're unable or unwilling to do it themselves. Then they could sign up for them as well, chat with other parents, make play dates. Um, but it's also as a tool for parents and caregivers to use in general, just because it isn't only lonely for the individual, but oftentimes also for the family members. So I really want them to have a place to talk to other people who get it, you know, and um, those are deciphered on the map by colors. So general users are blue on the map and then parents and caregivers are purple. So you could see. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I can imagine it's very like useful because it could be so isolating, like even for like those kids at school, like they're kind of separated from the general population or like just obviously different for for many reasons. But it's nice to be able to like find other people who are like you, which could be so hard to do. Right. You know, um, is there any charge for the application, any fees to use it? So 
So right now, the past year, it's been free to use, um, but we are launching the app hopefully next week. We're two weeks behind, but with development, you know, things come up, things happen. We want to make sure we're perfect before we launch it and put it out. So probably next week, the actual iOS and Android app will be out. And in that case, we are starting a subscription model um, at that time. So you get a free two weeks, and then after that, we're charging either monthly or yearly subscription. Got it. Any idea what the cost is going to be already? Yes, it's $40 for the year or $5 a month. That's very fair, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing huge, obviously. I want it to be accessible to everyone regardless of, like, money. Income and But, um, you know, we have to upkeep the app and things like that. And in order to keep it running and everything, obviously, we need to keep up with it, so. Gotcha. Is, um, was it hard for you, like, once you had the idea for the application, like, to find a developer to bring your, like, idea to life? What was, what was the hardest piece of bringing everything in? So there was a lot of hard pieces. Uh, initially, the hardest piece was raising capital, because obviously, I was a junior in college when I started this. So I was, like, 20 years old. Like, I had no idea. And I, like I said in the beginning, I thought I could do this with my savings and, you know, like a few thousand dollars. And then I start researching it and all of a sudden we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I'm like, I am 20 years old. I am in college. And how am I going to get access to that type of money? So at first it was just trying to raise that money. But now that I'm older and wiser and I did raise the money, uh, I know that there's a lot of ways to do so. So I use a lot of the different ways. I crowdfunded first. I have a golf outing every year now. And I have in one investor in it already. And actually this morning, I got confirmation that another investor is going to come in as well. Uh, so I'm very happy about that. But um, So it's crowd, crowdfunding to start? Mm-hmm. How much did you raise crowdfunding in the beginning? 15000 Oh, wow. Yeah. So you have a, a lot of supporters. Yeah. You were, that, you were saying you're well-connected kind of in that autism community right so i'm sure you got a lot of support there yes my brother is employed at a place that employs 75 percent people with autism and my family Mm -hmm. and i are very involved in that uh, with their ceos and all the families that go there so that was one place where i'm really involved autism speaks long island and i have become very involved in other uh, autism organizations on long island and like you know going to all these things throughout the years we have a ton of like family friends who have kids with special needs as well uh, so, yeah, I'm very blessed for the support, but it's not easy. And I have a huge circle between all of those people and my friends and family. But raising that money, crowdfunding, it was very difficult. Very difficult. Um, but how long it. was it? How long did it take to get to 15K? Well, they launched it, I believe, for a month. Um, and then I ended up pushing it out for like a few more months after that. And I had them make a marketing video with me, which was like the smartest thing I ever did because, I mean, especially in my case, when I'm doing something that's so personal and really like feeling based, it was so big for us to get a video out there to get people to see me and my brother interacting, me and my family interacting. Uh, And I feel like that's part of the reason why I ended up raising so much money because people would watch the video and it went semi-viral on Facebook at the time. It had like 50,000 views. But now I have a video that has 500,000 views. So wow. That doesn't seem that much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that must be surreal to see stuff like that. I didn't even know that it had that many views. It was my Now This video. That was like recently it came out. And I was s- scrolling through my Facebook looking for something literally like last week. And I came across the video and it said underneath 504K views. I'm wow. like, oh my God, that is insane. Yeah. It's insane. Got it. So going back to uh, just the web development piece of it, right? Because yes. I feel like that's such that's a hard. The like other challenge. People get a lot of ideas, and then you're like, I want to make an app out of this, but mm-hmm. a lot of people don't know like where to start. Right. With creating creating an application, you know, it's not like just something you can go on your phone, download another <laughs> app, and create the app on. Yeah. You know. Which you'd be surprised. Things like that actually do exist nowadays. For simple. Yeah, but, you know, I always was very big on wanting to do it right, right off the bat. I never wanted to like half-ass it. Um, I wanted it to be the best product it could be from the start, and I didn't want to just say, oh, I'll do it for $10,000 because it's easier. You know, I wanted to do it the right way, even though it took me longer than it probably would have if I didn't do that. Um, So, yeah, development is so tricky. I mean, obviously, people develop apps every day, and there's a lot of different avenues you could take, and I've explored many of them. One of them that many people do is go overseas to do development 
uh, whether it's like China, India China or India. Yeah. Um, and I did look into that, but yeah, they, they could do it at like a quarter of the cost, but that comes with a lot of Lack baggage. Of communication and yeah. Everything. There's a huge communication barrier. We're talking about huge time differences. Um, and for me, like I'm so like, I had a vision of this thing so much so that I had like drawings and I just, I knew what I wanted it to be and look like and feel like, and I just felt that I would never be able to get that across to them if I did it overseas. Um, and it's the same thing. Like I just, like I said, wanted to make sure I put out the best product possible and they probably could have done a good job. Don't get me wrong. It's just, I wanted to make sure it was exactly what I wanted. Uh, so yeah, finding a developer here in your budget is very difficult. I went to places in New York City, got quoted for uh, between one hundred and fifty and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars from pretty wow. much every single one, which is insane. Um, but lucky enough for me, when I got my first investor, who ended up reaching out to me through an article I wrote, and that's why I tell people to take every opportunity they get, no matter big or small. Like I've obviously been on national television at this point but I always take every opportunity no matter what because you never know who's going to read it see it listen to it um but my it's investor yeah it's true yeah. <laughs> my investor reached out to me through an autism speaks article that I wrote um him and his wife saw it on Facebook on a whim and ended up they have a son with autism and they reached out to me and said we love your idea we want to help you financially and he ended up being my first investor and that's really what I needed to to so, get it going. Yeah, and I used that money to develop the web app um, and then to develop the actual app, which I just did in the past three, four months. I used golf outing money, uh, stuff like that. Nice, nice. How, uh, how crazy was it to see, like, people in other countries start to use that? Crazy. Um, to be honest, I never really, like, specifically said, like, oh, I want users in Italy or something. Um, but like I said, I spent so much time building my social media, which was the best thing I ever did because I have followers in overseas all over, all over the place. And I didn't even realize that's pretty much how I got all these users because I have followers everywhere. Um, so it kind of just happened and it just keeps happening and it's, it's crazy. As far as like getting on Forbes and the Today Show and Lifetime and everything, was that something that you reached out to them for? Did they see your content and reach out to you? Well, what happened was I got my first big video done through Localist, and it's it's ABC, um, and it's national. It's big, and that girl ended up actually reaching out to me on Facebook, so she saw something I did, I don't know what, and loved it, and she reached out to me and said, this is what I do, It we want to do a piece on you, and at the time, I'm like, okay, like... Not thinking it's that big a deal, but it turned out being a very big turned out to be a very big deal. Um, and again, hundreds of thousands of views on this video. And after that, that was my first like big one. Um, people came to me pretty much. I mean, I was still obviously re like Forbes. I reached out to them. Um, what was the Forbes? Art? Was it an article about article. you? Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. And it was just about the application and how you came up with it and everything. Yeah, it was just about me being a woman entrepreneur as well as coming up with a you know, social networking type app that helps the special needs community. And it's my greatest accomplishment. I have it framed in my room. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but, yeah, it's um, dope. Yeah, it's, it's so cool. But yeah, once you get one, it's really a lot easier. Because like I said, then people started reaching out to me left and right. You have right. the credibility for yeah. everything. And now when I like email people the pitch, I'm like, here's the link to my Forbes. Here's the link to my Today Show. And it's just like, now I look like so legit. I'm like, oh my God, it's crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that definitely helps a lot. Like, here's my Forbes article. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what was, uh, like, at, at what point did you know, like, you had something good? I knew pretty much right away. I mean, like I said, once I started putting out putting it out into the community and I got such positive feedback and people were like, oh, my God, like, this is, like, parents would reach out to me and say, this is what we've been looking for. And I still get people reaching out to me saying that. And it's so personal to me because I know that it's something my family and I were looking for also. So I don't know. I just knew. I knew right away. And it sounds like so stupid. And I don't know, like, if you guys believe in this or not. But I just feel like I was literally born to do this. Like, there's mm -hmm. nothing else in this world yeah, that I should yeah. be doing. Purpose. You know? Yeah. Like, this is, like, my purpose to live. Like, yeah. I'm obsessed with it. It's my baby. And it makes me so happy. So. Is your brother involved with, like helping develop it all do you run stuff by him mm -hmm. use him as like a, a so tester when it for comes it to like testing it yeah so initially for the web app as well as the actual app uh, my brother as well as our family friends you know 
the the parents and the, the kids have been, well, I'll talk about the app right now because we're testing it right now, like literally as we speak. So I have like 20 people, um, Connor and Trey, who I told you about, their parents, other users who I have personal, have become personal friends with, my brother, my brother's friends, people he works with, all are testing it right now. Uh, so, you know, just seeing what they think of it and what could be better. And Are they all just connected with each other? Like there's 20 people testing it. They're all connected with each other. I mean, it's kind of like fake right now. Okay. You know, like yeah. they can message people on there, but it's like not real. You know, okay. it's just like. Just to see like how yeah. they interact with it. It's just to see how they like it pretty much. Because we have added features. We have added different things to the app. So we want to make sure, you know, everyone likes it and it's working well. And actually there was a glitch in it that I didn't even know about because. I obviously have an account. So on the actual app, I logged into my account. I don't have to create an avatar because I already have one. And someone who is testing it created an avatar, found out that the avatar thing wasn't working. And like, that's something I didn't know because I have an avatar already. Uh, <laughs> so then he ended up telling me that and we didn't even know. So that's why you test. That's it. fixed now. It's fixed that's now. why I didn't <laughs> drop last week. You're like, got to get the avatar together. That was one thing. And then iOS 14 just launched or whatever. And it, oh, so you got to be compatible with that. Up. Mm-hmm. Jesus. But the code wasn't like right for iOS 14. I don't know. So they literally have been doing all nighters for the past like four days. All of the developers trying oh, to wow. redo everything. Yep. Shout out to the developers. Yes, seriously. <laughs> Working hard seriously, out there. I feel horrible. You guys rock. Yeah, seriously. Do you have any other, like when the app drops, are you doing any other like talk shows, anything coming up like to get the word out more? Honestly, I don't have anything in line right now. Um, like, Three weeks ago, I had two national pieces drop, Hoda and Jenna, which is uh, associated with today. I, I watched that one. Yeah, sent that to, <laughs> you sent it to me before. Yeah, that's yeah. how I kind of learned a little bit. Yes. Nice. That one launched, and now this launched. So it was two national pieces, and I kind of did that purposely, like right near app launch, and then now we're like delayed. Um, but yeah, I like, I don't know. I've gone through my list of like publications I want to do. So now I need to like make a new list or something. How do you how do you drive more traffic to the application? Is it like, or is it just drive using, itself using ad space, word of mouth, tar- like? Well, right now I don't really do much of that. Like I should be, and that's actually something I'm trying to work on for like actual app launch. Is making more of a lo- legit marketing plan. I mean, I literally just like. You're figuring it out as you I go do along. it all myself. Right. I just do it through my social media. You know, I have an MBA in marketing, but it's not. You know, I don't have like a plan. Like right. I need. But you need money to do that stuff, you know, to run ads and mm-hmm. to do all that stuff. And I try to put as little money as possible, obviously, into that type of stuff because all my money goes to development right now. Um, but, yeah, so I'm lucky I'm good at it. But <laughs> pretty much it's it's become pretty, like, natural. Like, every day we get new users, like, and it's I don't really try for them <laughs> anymore, you know. Mm-hmm. It's at a point now where it just kind of runs itself. I guess word of mouth, social media, people just talk about it and you know, read my stuff, see my videos still. I mean, it's only going to grow. Yeah. Honestly, it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, that was my dad was just talking to me this morning about it. He sat me down and he's like, Juliana, like, I have a feeling soon this is going to be too big for like just Yeah, you're going to need a team. Yeah. Yeah, you will. Because with like even my taxes and stuff in the past years, you know, it's been like so little. Like X comes in, X goes out. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. Um, Everyone does. It. <laughs> X comes in, X goes out. So it's been so easy. But now we're at a point where it's going to be like revenue in, spending this. You know, it's just a lot. And my dad's like, I'm not a tax guy. I'm not. You know, we how do you structure like your business? Do, do you do it as like on your personal return, or did you set up like a corporation? I have an LLC. Okay. Uh, so I'm an LLC sole proprietor right now, and I might switch over to like an S corp one of these. I'm not really Eventually. sure. Yeah. But an LLC is working for me right now. And I obviously have like my business accounts and I run everything through that. So nice. What was the uh, the name of the business that you said employs? It's like 75 percent Spectrum Designs Foundation. And what kind of work do they do? They do T-shirt printing, um, embroidery, things like that. They're in Port Washington on Long Island and they're huge. Multi-million dollar nonprofit. They print for Google, Intel. Apple, Uber, like nationally, it's insane. And they employ 75% people on the spectrum, which is amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. Because yeah. I would imagine it, and like I think your app will probably help out a lot with this, but get it, find, finding jobs when you have autism or some other type of special needs is probably like really, really hard. So the more connected all of these people are with, you know, just their kids being connected or 
other people being connected to other people, like they'll be able to kind of network a lot easier to find work and just progress more in life. Yeah. And that's definitely another thing I want to branch into eventually is like employment. Um, I don't know what exactly, but just getting more companies to hire people with autism, special needs. Because those are the two biggest issues. Like if you ask like a special needs parent, they'll tell you that their biggest issue is either like loneliness or the fact that they're not going to get a job. Yeah. Yeah, that is difficult because it's like that still gives you like purpose in life and, or passion, yeah. you know, like just being able to go to go to work and stuff yeah. like that. And you'd be surprised like for their mental health, like Michael, my brother had off from work today because of Veterans Day <laughs> and he was like depressed all day. And I just got off the phone with my mom before I came here and she's like, you know, Michael's moping around all day. He has nothing to do because it's not like on his day off. He like like I went out to lunch with my friends like, you know, he doesn't have that. He loves going to work. He does. Yes. That's awesome. Mm. It's amazing. It's a cool story. I mean, what do you, what's the, I was actually going to ask a question before because you were talking about different countries. What's the like craziest country that's, you see like a population for it? Like. That you were like, whoa. what? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like. It's going to blow. It's going to freaking go We have them everywhere. And I'm like, like, I kind of expect like the big ones, you know, like Italy. Yep you know france um but we have like asia and africa and just yeah. like random ones and i'm like what like what even is this place <laughs> yeah. i'm like do these people even have like, like cell phones yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm yeah. confused i mean it's amazing but i'm just like oh my god like i've never even heard of this place like who are you um but it's been really cool because especially in the beginning we didn't have enough users so we literally just showed everyone in the whole world and now we can't do that anymore because it, it crashes mm. but in the beginning people were chatting from across the like oceans and across the country and people just think it's the coolest thing you know yeah and it makes them feel like oh my god there's people literally across the world that have the same thing as me you know yeah just like that connectedness i mean everybody yeah. autism no autism or special needs or no special yeah. needs like everybody wants to know that they're connected with another human being in some sort of way right facts yeah facts that's awesome yeah um do you do any sort of like i know like this comes up a lot with tech especially big tech right now and mobile applications like um will there be any sort of like data collection um selling of data like any of that stuff no uh not in the space I'm in no yeah um so everything when people sign up it's very impersonal in the sense that like pretty much you don't even have to put your last name uh so I could give out my information not that I would or even can because when people sign up it goes directly into our database that's completely locked away I have no access to it my developers don't even like it's just like in there and that's it um but yeah even if I did wanted to do something with it which I don't you like won't even know it's like Mike G is 18 years old and has autism you know what i mean yeah so it's Somebody not out like there would want yeah that it's yeah. not yeah. very specific <laughs> yeah. um but yeah it's more just about the safety thing like yes there's a lot of money in tech and apps because of people selling data right uh but not in this case because first off i'm in it for n- not the money i'm in it because this is i'm trying to make the world a better place and also because i care about obviously the safety over like selling the data so no one will ever see the data is the answer. awesome mm. yeah um, on the entrepreneur side, do you have ever have anybody reach out to you for help with starting their own businesses? Like, have you become sort of like a role model f- in, in that sense? Yes. <laughs> uh, my dad's always yelling at me because I am I give, like, advice to pretty much anyone who asks me, obviously, because I feel like I was in their position, like, yesterday, and I was just this struggling young person with an idea and had no idea what to do, who to talk to, where to start, and it's so overwhelming. Um And there were so many people who didn't give me the time of day. And I always promise myself, no matter how big I get, um, I'll never be that. You know, I'll always be that person who is going to offer people advice if they ask for it, whether they have one follower or a million. Um, How did you sort of figure things out when you were starting? Like, did you have somebody that you reached out to, anybody that guided you, helped you? A little bit, but not so much. It was um, just kind of was trial and figure error, out figuring it out, yeah. failing, getting I back I did a up. lot of reading. Um, once I decided I want to start a business, I wasn't even a business major. In fact, I don't even, I have a bachelor's in health science because it was too late for me to change my major. Um, so I started reading so many books. Like I read like 30 that summer on entrepreneurship, um, biographies about entrepreneurs, Facebook, making apps. You name it, I read it, and I still have all my books and plan on keeping them forever and having them in my bookshelf as a reminder. Um, 
But yeah, just a lot of reading, a lot of Googling. I still Google stuff. Like I'll be in a meeting, someone will be, say something and I'm like Googling it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm the first to admit that I still don't know everything. And I'm like, uh, um, but. That's, that's like the hardest part of starting a business, though, is just not knowing. Yeah. Even like like taxes, like knowing how to how to file your taxes. But like what's the I worst that can happen? Up? You know what yeah. I mean? Like people are so scared right. and stuck in that. Like, yeah. oh, I don't know what to do first or I don't know what to do. Well, just do something. Yeah, you know what right. I mean? And you're going to learn like you'll learn. Just do something. It's not as scary on the other side when you fall. Right. Looking back now, though, I'm so proud of myself because I feel like as I get older, I guess I'm more like self-conscious or something because looking back now, I'm like, wow, I can't believe I like did that, you know, like <laughs> yeah. I put myself out there and started this thing from nothing. And like now I feel like I would be self-conscious, you know, and it's just crazy to me. But um, and I always want to talk about being a woman entrepreneur because that's always been very hard. Mm -hmm. I'm surrounded by men yeah. in my industry and I'm not even like that. Like, you know, I love women, you know, great go women. But at the same time, like I'm not like that, but it's true though, because right. there's been so many, so many instances, even early on. Like I, one of my first opportunities I got was a panelist at Bloomberg, Bloomsburg in the city mm. on crowdfunding. And this is my favorite story to tell. Ever. Here we go. This is what we are. <laughs> this is the juice. This is my favorite story ever. And if the guys I did this, this with ever listen to this story because I tell it all the time like I feel like they're gonna be like oh that was me you know uh so I was a panelist at Bloomsburg and it was one of my first big opportunities I was so nervous obviously uh and it was about crowdfunding and it was in a room full of New York City executives and rich people um and I was the only woman panelist and I was also the youngest by so much like all the other panelists were like 40 to 50 year old men and they had all raised over a million dollars some even over five million dollars crowdfunding because they're what like were they funding like, like huge corporations obviously okay. like i was a one woman show and they were like this huge thing which like that's amazing i'm happy for them but i was just like a joke to them uh so we were in the green room getting mic'd and you know now i'm so comfortable doing this but at the time i was just like new to it so i was very i was nervous and how, old, how old were you at the time uh it had to be like three years ago. So I guess 21. Okay. Um, so I was in the green room getting mics and my mom was with me and I didn't even know this till after the fact, but I was telling someone in the room what I do. And the other guy was like rolling his eyes at me pretty much like, you know, obviously what I did wasn't as impressive as their million dollars that they had, which I get. <laughs> so then we went out there and started talking and um i got asked what i do why i do it things like that and my brother and my mom were in the audience and i just told the story as usual and i told everyone my brother's right there everyone turned and looked at him my mom was hysterically crying of course she <laughs> still does that and i got a standing ovation like in the middle of this thing like not at the end like in the middle um you know and people were all emotional and it was like this huge thing and it was just because i told the story and they didn't care that i raised ten thousand dollars versus a million because it was real. It was, they it was cared like, that I was in it for such a nice reason. And my mom and brother were there with me. And, you know, I'm trying to make the world a better place type thing. So then we ended up walking off. And the same guy who rolled his eyes at me before turned to me and said, I was wrong. You're the one that we need to watch. Mm, and damn. it was just such At a, least he knew he was wrong. Yeah. 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 And, you know, no hard feelings at all. I completely get it. Um, I get it, you know. But it's just, like, funny to me. Because my thing is I get invited places because I deserve to be there. Like if they asked me to come speak at something, I got that I got that opportunity because I deserve to be there. Therefore, I'm going to act like I deserve to be there because mm -hmm. I do. Otherwise, right. I wouldn't have gotten the opportunity. And from there on out, like that's the mentality always. I think it's even more impressive, like having started with absolutely no knowledge of business mm -hmm. and just like a passion for something and then figuring out your way to to get it done. Yeah. You know, it's, it's even better than somebody who has like an entire corporation backing yeah. them who for you, if you fail. It's like your your entire life's dream work is on the line, whereas like crowdfunding for some sort of corporation, if they fail, it's just a write off. You know, yeah. it's I mean, it's a mantra for me. I read a book called Everything is Figure Outable, one of my favorites. And it's true. Yeah. And it's something I apply to everything I do in business because there's if there's a will, there's a way like I have raised and spent over one hundred thousand dollars. I'm 24 years old and none of that money was mine. So. You know, if you have a dream and you actually want to do something, you can. There is literally no excuse in the world why you can't. 
How many investors do you have now? You said you have you just signed your second this morning i just got verbal confirmation from my second but up until now i had one and the first investor they wanted to give you the money it was like they, they wanted to invest they liked the idea yeah they have a son with autism okay. so i'm really only interested in getting people involved that are like personally connected to the cause mm-hmm. only because you know if you get like a random angel investor they're only going to care about a return and that is not what i'm in this for obviously i have a business model and i want it to be a business aka make money but that's not the main focus. The main and focus is helping people. And your second investor from today is also? He has a personal connection, yes. He has an extended family member with autism, and he's actually a Sacred Heart alum also. Nice. Which Did is they reach out, me. reach out to you? or you reach, okay. He reached out to me. Yep. That's awesome. So you're not even like really going out trying to sell people on your idea? It's just Not attraction. really, because I'm just really big on like it's going to come to me when I need it most. And both times throughout my business, that has happened to me. Um and like I said, I just do what I can in the meantime. And those things, getting myself out there is the reason why I, these investors have come to me. Um, so I've been really big into that lately. And today's 11-11. And I watched a TikTok this morning. I love TikTok. <laughs> about um, the number 19 and how it means like something really spiritual and like with your life and like a change is about to come. And then I got here, sat down. And you told me this is the 19th episode. Whoa. And you know what's crazy about It's weird, right? You know, to add to that weirdness, apparently it's 11, uh, what was it? 11. 11 is the date. It's 11, 11. 11, 11, 2020. And it only happened. It's, you know, this is going to be, this is like a, apparently Only time. Manif- it's a manifestation yes. day. Yep. If you want to manifest something Big today, there's a portal, day. a spiritual yep. portal. I know I put the tin hat on. I wish I, read, I had one. I read this really funny thing about like texting a girl and it was like, constantly text them at 11 11 <laughs> and 4 44 they'll think it's a sign <laughs> oh that's so <laughs> like funny joke, right? oh that's funny <laughs> oh that's hilarious did you ever read the alchemist no oh wow you gotta read it what is it it's a book uh it's a it's a fictional story about um purpose purpose mm-hmm. but a lot of it it's my list a lot of it is about uh it's a very very easy read pretty short it's uh by paulo coelho Okay. Older book, um, but I'm it's just about finding purpose and following the omens. Yeah, which yeah, I've been big into that lately. Yeah, looking out for the signs, recognizing them, following them. We talk about it all the time on our podcast. They say it's if like you the ask the book. universe for signs, then they'll give it to you. Yeah, put yeah. yourself out there; it'll it'll come back. Yeah. yeah. Do you have uh, anything else that you wanted to to add to this? Anything you wanted to to say? What's something you live by? Maybe we like to we like to close off sometimes. We like to that. ask what you live by and any advice to for young. any a younger a younger, a younger you. you. I have so much, so much. <laughs> um, Now's the time to say it. <laughs> well, yeah. I've always lived by be the change you want to see in the world. Since middle school, I have it written over my my headboard in my room, on my wall. Be the change you want to see in the world, and I have always lived that. But until I had this business, I felt like I wasn't fully living it. Um, because I want people to care less about money and care less about, you know, themselves and more about other people and making the world a better place. Because I truly think if more people did that, the world would be a better place. And it's a pretty horrible place, especially right now. Um, so I'm big on that. And also never taking no for an answer, which I've said with this whole podcast, like you could do it if you want to do it. Trust me. And that's with anything, right? Yeah, yeah with anything. Yeah. If I could do it, you could do it. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. Um, and what was the other question? Just if, if you had to give like any sort of advice to like a younger version of you, somebody who's just getting started, like they have an idea, like we kind of talked about it a little bit, but like what advice, like what's the first piece of advice you would give to somebody? Jump. Go Jump. for it. Yep. I always picture it as like an analogy. Like I went cliff jumping once and it was terrifying but you're literally standing on the top and it's so scary to look down. And I didn't jump for literally an hour. I was so scared. And eventually I jumped. And once you jump, you're falling and that's it. And you can't go back. And that's kind of what I always think about with business. Like, yes, the first jump is really hard to take. And, you know, it feels really scary, especially when you're looking down at a long journey and something that you know is going to be hard. But once you jump, that's it. You're free falling and you did it. And it's a Band-Aid. You pulled it off and... The rest just, you just do it then. And it's, you know. Yeah. I appreciate that advice. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Thank you. Where can, uh, before we wrap up, where can people find you on social media? Uh, well, Making Authentic Friendships is all of my social media. I'm most active on Instagram always. And then my personal is Juliana Featherman. 
you know, if you're my husband, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> and any single guys out there looking? Literally. Julia Feather, Juliana Featherman, sorry. Juliana. Literally. And then what else was I going to say? Oh, makingauthenticfriendships.com is the web app, and you can watch all of our news and all the videos I talked about are, are linked there and me, pictures of me and my family. But I forgot to mention that Making Authentic Friendships, MAF, are my brother's initials, which is why it is the way it is. Wow. Talk too. about destiny. Michael Andrew Featherman. And I incorporated my LLC on his birthday. That's awesome. By chance or just you, you purposely did that? Well, I, it was June and I'm like, I might as well do it on his birthday. Mm. You know? That's awesome. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, okay. When the app comes out, hopefully this coming week, that's going to be on the the podcast or another podcast the uh I, apple itunes yes android apple, platform I, blah, 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 blah. itunes store it's whatever available it is. on um, the app store for ios and android so okay. google play and the app store and that'll just be under the the full name making authentic friendships yep and if you follow me on social media i'll probably be blowing blowing everything up once it launches so you won't Perfect. miss it awesome awesome Got anything else mike guys this is awesome no this is beautiful make yeah. sure when it comes out Go get that app. Yeah. <laughs> Peace, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.